Hey guys, PZZ Yeskin here. Uh, I'm going to be doing another uh, VCube 6 walkthrough, or excuse me, not VCube 6, VCube 7 walkthrough solve. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to make this one a lot shorter, as my last one was 22 minutes long, so I'm going to hopefully uh, get this one a little shorter. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to more so focus on the explaining rather than me actually doing it, which sounds a bit counterintuitive. That might make it seem like it'll be longer. However, you'll see. I have a, a plan. So let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so here, right, here we go. All right, so first thing I want to do uh, in solving the uh, V cube seven and really any big cube, but I want to start by solving the center, the uh, the centers, which basically are these innermost pieces here. All right, um, you know, you could think of it kind of like, op you know, it's kind of the opposite of what you do on a jigsaw puzzle. If you're if you're trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle. You would normally try and get the outermost pieces done first, so that way you know you kind of have uh, that out of the way, and you kind of get an idea for you know how to build off of that. But on this case, in this case, on bit on cubes, you want to start with the centers. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Now there is a method called the cage method that um, you do start with the outermost edges. I, I've tried learning it; it's a little bit weird. Uh, I haven't tried it on any of these bigger cubes, just on the four x four. But anyhow, okay, so. I happen to solve my centers a little bit differently uh, than most people. Uh, this is the way I taught myself how to do it, and I thought at first it would take me a little too long to do it this way, so I went to doing it the normal way, which is to use lines and put them up there, but then I found actually that seems to take even longer. So I went back to this method, and I have to say I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is instead of just making a row and then you know building off of that, I'm actually going to start by making a 3x3 three three block in the middle. And I'm going to start with green just because that's a color I usually start with. So in order to do that, I'm going to start by making a 1x3 uh, line. Right there, now it is a 4x, or excuse me, a 4x1 line, but it is, you know, 1x3 line, so that's good. Alright, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another 1x3 line to put next to it. like that. Alright, then we're just going to put that next to that. Alright, and then we got one more that we need to make, so pair those two uh, together, and where's the last piece? There it is, so I'm going to put that one over there. And now I'm going to pop that up there. So there is my 3x3 three three piece. So you can see that's 3x3 three three piece more. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this to a 4x3 piece, and then I'm going to extend that into a 5x3 piece. Now the way I'm going to do that is, again, I'm going to make some 1x3 uh, lines um, to put next to it. So this will do. Even though it's a 4x1 line, it doesn't matter, but now I'm going to put this right next to that. Okay, and I'm going to do it again over here, so let's bring this piece over. Now these pieces here are a little weird because, you know, they look like they're the same piece, but they're actually two different pieces. Two different types of pieces, that is. They look like they're the same type of piece, but in fact they're two different types of pieces. So you got, that's something that I had to get used to a bit, but got that there. I'm going to put that right there, and now I got the 5x3 bar, which is pretty cool. Alright, and then I'm going to do the lines. So I basically pair that up the same way I do with the uh, 1x3 lines, but in this case I'm making 1x5 lines to uh, put at the edges. So, of the center. So, <laughs> okay, there you go. Like that. And then I just bring that up there. And then I do that again. And put that in here. And I got the green center done. Alright, I'm going to change the battery of my camera real quick because it's blinking and we'll continue. Okay, so I got a new battery in my camera now. Alright, what's the next thing I do? Well, the next thing is I want to solve the opposite center to the green center. So in this case, I'm now going to start the blue center. And now how do I do that? I actually do it the exact same way I did with the green center. I'm going to start by getting the one by, or the 3x3 three three block in the middle. Okay, there's that 3x3 uh, three three block, and now I'm going to extend that into a 5x3 block. Okay, got that done, and now I'm going to put the sides on. Okay. 
There we go. Blue side is done. This is the green side. Or green center and blue center. Okay, now I'm going to start working on the sides. The side centers. Now, how do I do that? Again, exactly the same way. Now, in this case, I normally don't ex inspect my cubes that much for I start because generally I'll start with green anyway. So, But when I get to the side centers, I do like to inspect to see which one I like to do first. And I've already got this one uh, one by 3 piece here. And I've got um, this one by 3 piece here starting to form. So I think I'm going to start with black in this case. So, um, again, I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, one by th or 3 by 3 block. So... I mean, it, again, it's the exact same thing, but the only real difference, and it's pretty self-explanatory, that it would be a little bit more, that it is a little bit more restricted, um, as you have more, you have a bit more restricted uh, area to work with. You know, you don't have the entire cube to move pieces around. Now you got, because you're limited to, uh, these are already taken up. So, anyhow, anyone do the black? Alright, there's the black side. Now I'm going to do orange because we've already got, again, I already got that forming. Uh, so, again, it just makes the most sense for me to go and start with orange. So, same exact thing again, but again, it's even more uh, restricted. And actually, you might have noticed that I'm not going to, I'm not starting with yellow this time. Uh, when I get to the side centers, after I finish one of the side centers, I do the adjacent center as opposed to the opposite center. So, uh, there's a slight difference there, but I'm going to go and do the orange center. That all right. Now we're on to the last two centers, which are a little bit different. But and in this one, I'm trying to actually do it uh, the way that normal the that the people normally do it, which is uh, that I do lines. Um, so I'm gonna sort of try and do that. So we go ahead and get. You want to always start with the middle line like this, and we're making uh, just one by five lines here for all to work off of. I guess so. Here you can see I got that one done. All right, and I also got having to get this one done here. It's not always going to be though that I get both of them done at the same time, and I'm not trying to. It doesn't really matter, but you know sometimes it happens. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do either an inner or an outer one by five piece. So I think I'm going to do an inner one because you see I've got this here. So. All right, so there's my inner one done. Now just to do an outer one, you have to do an outer one afterwards. Otherwise, it's a little bit hard, er, to do, which is, you know, yeah, erch, lock up. Alrighty, so there's the, those, and you can get this one done, but that's a little bit tricky for me, I, I'm just not, I'm not too, too sure how I can do that, so I generally here just use trans, transversals or transitives, I don't know what they're called, but, um, basically it just swaps whatever centers you want to swap with each other, so. And there we go, I've got the centers all done. So, yeah, you know, again, that, that's generally the easiest step. And now it's on to edges. And in this particular video, I will be showing you the method that I'm trying to learn. I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to explain it, but I will at least, you know, attempt to. So. All right, what I want to start doing um, is I want to start by searching for two edge pieces that are already paired up. But they don't necessarily need to be touching like these are, but since they are, that's convenient. I'll go ahead and do that. Now I want to go ahead and start looking for the other uh, three of these pieces. Now, I already saw one right there, and uh, in this case, I need to bring this up here so that way uh, I can do... Oh, we also got one. Actually, oh, okay. Um, There's a little... Uh, 
I mean, it's not tricky. All I need to do is get this one flipped. So I'm going to go ahead and pair this one up and then do the flipping algorithm, which I need to learn the longer one because it actually is uh, quicker and easier to do, apparently. But, you know. All right. And then in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and pair this one up. Bam. Now I've got that whole uh, edge paired. I'm going to bring this up to the top layer. And I'm going to replace it with an unsolved edge, bring it down. And. I'm not going to revert the centers. And some of you are going, why? Why, won't you re why aren't you going to revert the centers? Because if you go ahead and revert the centers, that's just an extra step. It's not necessary. Um, this way, it's just a lot easier and quicker. Just don't worry about these. Just The only thing you got to make sure you don't do is accidentally leave one of them like this and then go to, you know, start pairing up edges and stuff because then you can really mess up your centers and have to start all over again. So... Uh, in this case, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do uh, orange and yellow because those two there are also paired together. So here's that one. There's that one. Need to look in the uh, upper layers for the other one. I think there's that one. All right. So this one needs to go over here. Okay. Then just bring those together. Um. One more. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put this one up here with this one and replace it with an unsolved one. I'm going to bring it down these so I can start with r r blue and red. I'm not going to go through and explain to every single one of these, but, you know. All right, I want to actually gonna go ahead and bring this one. I'm going to go ahead and flip that so that way I can uh, insert it in the process of flipping these two so they're both facing the right way. Um, yeah, and I'm basically just going to keep on doing what I've been doing, you know, looking for the uh, other edges here. I'll go ahead and finish this one on camera. Uh, I need to get this one down here, so bring that down like that, and this goes right there, okay, bring, this to, uh, bring all those together, so now I got that. And bring it up, replace with an unsolved edge pair, bring that down, and I'm just going to continue doing this. So I'm not going to show the whole thing on video because it'll take too long, but I'm basically going to keep doing this until I have all of this layer and all of this layer full of solved edges. So I'll show you what I mean when I get to that point. So, yeah. Okay, I've got both the top layer and the bottom layer here full of uh, soft edge pieces. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and revert the edges back to normal at this point. And now I am going to uh, continue pairing up the edges. It is a little bit different here. It, it might be a little hard for me to explain. Um, but basically what I'm going to do, see here, here's some edges that are already paired up right there. The blue and orange. So I'm going to find some other blue and oranges They're right there. I want to get them to that way they're facing each other. Um, just because it's easier that way. Um, actually, in this case, I don't want to be facing each other. It's a, it's a little bit confusing for me to uh, explain, but let me just go ahead and flip that. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and pair... Th let's see, which one do I want to pair? I'll bring this one over right there, and then I'm going to go and flip this edge right there. Now that that's flipped, uh, there's nothing in the way here for me to go ahead and revert the center back. And I'm just going to keep doing that for all the other pieces. Like here, I want to bring this over here. It's a little weird. What I like to do is when I have this kind of case here, and again, it's really hard for me to explain, but I like to draw a U. Bring this piece over to the edge that it needs to go to, come back down, and then draw back. And whichever direction I go back is the right direction I want to bring this. So then I'm going to bring that over there, flip the edge and then it automatically falls in place. So, it's really hard for me to explain this to uh, you guys, and I don't really want to go through and explain it too much, because I'm trying to keep this video short, but I will at least get this uh, last edge done. There you go. So that one's done. And then I just continue doing that. I will come back, though, when I'm down to the last two edges. Alright, I'm not to my last two edges yet, but, you know, I just figured out a way to explain this better. My goal uh, in doing these last four edges is to get to this point where I have three uh, already paired up and then I need to pair up their other two. Um, that's what I'm trying to get to. And in this case, this one's kind of flipped up weird, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. But yeah, I want to get... The, my goal is, is to get to the point where there's only three of them uh, 
You know, there's three of them paired up and three of them not paired up. And then it's easier. So, I'm going to flip this. Actually, yeah, I do need to flip this. And then just fling this one over. Pop. And then this one over. I'm actually trying to pair this one over here. But in doing what I'm doing here, that will automatically happen. See, now this is in place to go in there. When I revert that, it goes right in place. So, All right, we're now down to the last two uh, edges. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start by bringing this one over here. This is, an actually, this is actually a very easy case. I'm going to bring this over here. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this over here. And they should automatically pair up. And they do. Now I've got those last two edges paired. And all of the edges are now paired up. So now I basically have a 3x3 three three that I need to solve. So I'm going to solve it like a 3x3. Three three. So I'm going to go and get the... Uh, I'm just going to start with the yellow here. I'm going to go and get the yellow cross. Which I am still very slow at. I am trying to work on getting the cross better. Alright, so there's the yellow cross. Doesn't look like much of a cross, but it is a cross, trust me. Uh, do F2L. Pair this up with that. Done. Insert. Um, pair this with that. So, the best way to do that would be... Like, let me see. Like this. Boom. Paired up. And inserted. And okay. Sure. Just aligned. And, and lastly, this I just need to do R I D I R R D R I D I three times, and it'll automatically uh, fix itself. Just like that. I gotta get the top cross or the black cross. That doesn't sound good, but it's black cross. Done like that. Now I need to. Uh, actually, all the edges are already fixed, so now I just need to in, uh, put the corners where they need to go. Blech. There. And I just need to continue doing that. Maybe I'll get lucky this time and it'll solve themselves, or maybe I won't get lucky and now I'll need to orient it. Uh, manually. So now I just need to orient these corners. And last two turn, or last turn and it's solved. So that is how I solve my uh, VCube 7. Hopefully you learned something from this one. I will uh, I will not be taking down my other video because one of my biggest pet peeves is when people take down their old videos and then you can't watch them anymore. So I'm going to leave that one up but in that video I will probably redirect you to this video because it is hopefully going to be a little shorter. Um, anyhow, thanks for watching.